It seems as though the NHL is starting to give up on Pierre-Luc Dubois. After a brutal 4-3 shootout loss to the San Jose Sharks, the LA Kings have been in complete freefall, but Kings head coach Tom McClellan had some choice words about Pierre-Luc Dubois that doesn't really paint a pretty picture for his future. But what happens next in Pierre-Luc Dubois' career? How irrelevant has he been with this LA Kings team, and can he actually turn a page in the end? Well, make sure you watch till the end as we go through the complete breakdown of this controversial player. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe button if you're enjoying the hockey breakdowns to see more like these all throughout the year. Somehow, some way though, Pierre-Luc Dubois has found a way to create more controversy in his time with the LA Kings. Of course, as we know, signing that massive 8.5 million dollar contract for LA after being traded to them in the offseason he was there to stay from day one but the results have just not been there as a six foot three 218 pound center at 25 years old who should be in the prime of his career you see the results so far nine goals 10 assists 19 points in 44 games and the defensive game also hasn't been too pretty there was a game a couple of nights back where he ended up getting a couple of points a goal and an assist looked pretty good but since then he's gone back to his, well, Pierre-Luc Dubois ways. This is a problem time and time again with this player about lackadaisical play, giving up on games, and giving up in big stretches of the season. And we're seeing that again with this LA Kings team. The team that was supposed to be his home, his actual home for real this time, but it honestly doesn't even feel like it. And head coach Tom McClellan has tried everything, putting him on a wing, putting him at center, putting him on a top line, putting him on all these different situations, but nothing really seems to stay all that consistent, especially on Dubois' side. The effort and the attention to detail just has not been there. And I still think playmaking wise, this guy has done pretty well for LA. That is his bread and butter at the end of the day. But at the same time, we could see a lot more out of Dubois. This is one of the most talented players on the team. And he just has not been able to unlock it. Time and time again, he's come up with disappointing results. There have been a couple of times in a couple of seasons where it's looked pretty solid. I thought last year, 63 points in 73 games was when we really started to see Dubois really pop off in the regular season. And for good reason, he looked pretty good. But now, of course, going off Winnipeg and to a new team in LA, he hasn't exactly had the great greatest first impression in the world. We go on to some of the impressions after the game regarding the LA Kings and of course Pierre-Luc Dubois and from Chris Meany. It took about two periods for Tom McClellan to take Pierre-Luc Dubois off the top line last night. It's been an awful first year in Los Angeles for BLD, who signed an eight-year, $68 million contract in the summer, 19 points in 44 games, two power play points, and an average time on ice of 15 minutes and 53 seconds. And then you got the big one here from Russell Morgan. He said, ask Tom McClellan what he's seeing about Pierre-Luc Dubois without the puck. And here is Tom McClellan's response. At the end of the day, whether Dubois gets four minutes or gets 24 minutes, he has to be a difference maker. And with or without the puck, we've gone through this long enough. It's time. Now, if that doesn't speak to you as a coach that is really agitated with this guy, I don't know what would. Because this, to me, basically just feels like this has been festering for so long, rising up, bubbling for so long, especially regarding Tom McClellan's feelings about Pierre-Luc Dubois. Just one question about the, the, the play without the puck, the play away from the puck, and he makes such a big statement like that, saying, with or without the puck, we've gone through this long enough. This guy just seems annoyed to be his coach, in all honesty. But he is completely truthful. He needs to be a difference maker. He's getting paid to be a difference maker, especially on a team like LA where they gave up a lot of depth to get a player like this. They gave up a Velarde. They gave up an Ayafalo. Two guys, especially in Ayafalo's case, who were pretty beloved. And you bring in a player like this who has so much potential, so much capacity to be what LA needs him to be. Yet, there just has been no consistency in his game. And again, all, a long time trying to drill it into his head that he needs to be more, but you're still getting middling results out of him. And unfortunately, that might just be the case for Pierre-Luc Dubois. He might just be an uncultable type of player. And we're seeing right now just the frustrations that have come from Tom McClellan. And that's coming up for the frustration of different coaches and different teams regarding his lackadaisical play and the same issues that we keep running into time and time again. Now, before we get any further, let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsor in Sleeper Fantasy. If you think you know hockey, then try to turn your hockey knowledge into real money with the Sleeper app, the ultimate fantasy sports app that can turn your game day into payday. 
Now we're coming at you with another slate of NHL picks here today on the Sleeper app. And for my three picks today, I'm first going to go Dylan Larkin higher than 0.5 points. He's been solid lately, and especially for Dallas with Ottinger, kind of still battling injuries and sickness. I think we could see a pretty open offensive game. I think Larkin's going to be a big part of that. I have Adam Fox higher than 0.5 assists, targeting those lesser teams like San Jose. I think he's going to go off. And then Cole Caulfield, higher than 3.5 shots. He's been really rolling lately, and I think he's going to just pour it on versus Ottawa. Go to the description, click on the link, make sure you join Sleeper Fantasy or download the app and use code GRAB at your first deposit and you can get up to a $500 match. I especially love the app, man. It's so easy to just make your daily NHL picks. So thank you to Sleeper Fantasy for sponsoring today's video. Now getting back to the Pierre Dubois stuff and what we're talking about here, it's getting pretty crazy to watch because now Kings fans talking about buyouts. I mean, it's gone about as bad as it could up to this point. And just like what we saw with Dubois being dealt to the Jets in the first place, he's always going to have that trade cloud above his head. He's always going to have the fact that he wanted out of Columbus. He wanted out of Winnipeg, back-to-back -back teams, to go to a team like the LA Kings. And of course, what they end up giving up in a player like Velarde, who has 20 points in 26 games, a player like Alex Alafalo, who's brought up great value for the Jets in a middle six role. There is so much pressure on Dubois to be the guy that he might not be in the end. Pierre Luc Dubois, I think, has shown that he just has very little sauce. He just has very little of him in him. And we've seen just constantly over the past years how he's wanted to go from team to team, not really liking his situation, not really wanting to be where he's at. And consistently, we've seen the results follow. And now in LA, where we thought it was supposed to be his last location, his true home. Finally, Dubois wants to go where he goes. And now he's putting up the results he's putting up. So yeah, sure, he has been unlucky at times, but the guy simply just isn't playing as well as he should. Now, to be fair, from LA Kings Insider, they ended up posting the full quote from Tom McClellan talking about Pierre-Luc Dubois saying, well, we took him from center, putting him on wing, and he ended up back in the middle. So far, as much as his play is his play, we may be confusing him, sending all over the place, but at the end of the day, if Dubois gets four minutes or Dubois gets 24 minutes, he has to be a difference maker. So again, with McClellan, he's admitted that he's kind of been in a lot of different situations, but he says as much that even though there's brought some confusion because of that, there's been a lot of change throughout the lineup where he's been, where he's played, he still needs to be better. He still needs to be way more consistent than he has been. Now, we really haven't seen Dubois' actual time on ice really change too much, but I think we could start seeing Dubois' ice time get lesser and lesser. I mean, he was put on the first line trying to rejuvenate some of that Kings offense, rejuvenate a player like Anze Kopitar. Didn't really end up working in the end. And again, you can see versus San Jose, a minus two. It was just a bad game from him through and through and not what the Kings needed him to be. But this is what ultimately becomes the problem because Dubois had every say in where he went. He had every say in his contract, $8.5 million. And they are paying Dubois to be something more than he is right now. Right now, he's kind of just a passive, solid playmaker who isn't bringing much else to the game. And the fact that this was the perfect situation for him, pretty much given to him on a silver platter, yet this is the worst results he's gotten in a long time, is honestly just pretty sad. You cannot, I don't care what situation you are in, to be paid $8.5 million, traded twice because you didn't like the situation, go to the perfect team for you, which could instantly give you a top six offensive spot, was basically giving it to you, trying to make things work for the sake of anything holy, trying to make things work, and yet you still play like this, you still play so passive, still so inconsistent away from the puck. The fact that Dubois is still not being able to reach his potential, is just straight disappointing. And thank goodness for LA early in the season, they were able to really play well around him. The rest of that team was amazing. But now that LA is starting to slip, they're starting to rely on Dubois more, or at least need something from him finally. I mean, it's been weeks and weeks and months and now where LA has needed something from him. And now they actually need something from him. The rest of the team isn't playing well either. They're in a humongous skid. And now the magnifying glass is even sharper on a player like Dubois who just isn't giving his all. At this point, what else does this guy need? I mean, again, they've been trying him on the first line. They bumped down Byfield to put him on the first line. They've been trying everything possible to make something work. 
I mean, you don't pay a guy $8.5 million to go around the lineup, see where he fits. He should be able to fit anywhere in the lineup and be able to at least put up some level of production. I mean, it's the Jonathan Huberto thing all over again, where this player should be so much more than he is, can be so much more than he is. But especially with Dubois, he forced himself out of multiple clubs. He put himself in the perfect situation, yet is still putting up the lackadaisical effort that, he, that he's having. What type of situation do you need to be the player you need to be? Because it feels like he'll never be able to reach the potential that he actually can if he's not able to do it here in LA. I mean, this is a Kings team that is that has been so steady. And even though they've had some inconsistencies in the past month, Dubois should be a player that is a consistent guy. Finally, for the first time in his career, this year was supposed to be the year where we finally saw that out of him. Yet, it's been the worst that we've seen maybe in his entire career. And I'm sorry, dude, you're 25. There is so very little excuses left. You're getting paid $8.5 million. It's a joke, the effort you're putting out there. And sure, there are some still good moments. And I mean, playmaking, passing-wise, he's been solid. But that's the bare minimum. This guy's being paid. This He's this third highest paid payer on the team. He better be good at playmaking at least. Jeez. And I'll just say it took 44 games into Pierre-Luc Dubois' King's tenure for his head coach to already come out saying that he needs more from him. He needs so much more than what we've seen in Dubois so far. And the fact that, again, he's gone from two different teams already Two different teams that put so much stock into him just to leave and to go to this Kings team. And now they barely even want to play him either. They're trying everything possible to make this thing work after setting him to a mega extension in the offseason. It feels like everything is just, is just sad to watch right now with Dubois. And I hope things get better. Again, this is a talented player we're talking about here. But now his head coach is starting to lose trust and there might not be too much time left for things to fully turn over. Unfortunately, I think this situation will probably just turn out fine right now. Maybe Dubois is able to unlock another extra gear, but at this point, at least this season, I extremely doubt it. I mean, you see what he's been able to do out there, and I think the best case scenario for LA is that he just turns out to be fine, which considering how much they're paying him, how much they traded to get for him in the end, is a pretty large disappointment. But I want to know in the comments down below, what do you guys think of Pierre-Luc Dubois so far with the LA Kings? Am I wrong? Has he been much better than we're talking about here? Do you think he'll turn a page with the LA Kings or do you think it might just be too late? Let us know down below. And of course, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more hockey breakdowns just like this. And of course, share the video with all the hockey, all the Kings fans you guys know online and click on this card for all of my trigger content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day and goodbye.